Right, so as you've been seeing from our last series of videos, we've been trying to sort out um, some problems. We initially had a misfire and uh, we sorted out by changing the leads and the coil, but we still had this situation where the water wasn't flowing through the heater matrix and we were just getting no heat at all, most like it was blocked, which you know can be caused by an airlock, but normally you can get rid of that airlock even if it comes back due to another problem. So we did that ruling out of any flow problems, which as you've seen, we've now more or less done. So the next thing to do is to um, do a pressure test where we put some air from our compressor into each cylinder and uh, check that it doesn't leak out there is a procedure to doing that which hopefully through the process we'll explain if we do find a problem then it may be the case that we do have to do the head gasket so the first thing we're going to do to do this test is we're going to be removing this cover which we've already started and you've got the series of um, little bolts that go in the series point down there and uh, we're going to be removing the rocker cover and of course you've got these bolts along the front and uh, along the back once we've done that we'll uh, start on the next stage and I'll tell you what we're going to be doing all right, so we've got the cam cover removed now and what we're going to now do is remove the uh, bolts around the rocker head cover so we can remove that Right, so all the bolts are removed. All we need to do now is um, just take it off. That's good. The gaskets come off with that and we can now get access to the uh, cans. You can see that all the spark plugs are out and um, this particular cylinder has got our um, testing hose in where we're going to pressurise each cylinder with um, a low amount of pressure from our um, compressor I think around about two bar and what that will do is we see if any air is leaking through but you have to have the valve shut on each cylinder to obviously make sure you get the um, pressure build up to see if it is leaking through the gasket so that's what we have to do on each cylinder is get the valves closed so we can then pressurize it and see if it holds its pressure or if any water or any bubbles come up in the water um, which would mean there is a leak on that, that cylinder, so that's what we're going to do next. So I just thought for uh, interest while we're doing this, I'll show you this little adapter piece we've got for doing this pressure test on the cylinder. And uh, basically it's an old spark plug that's been um, drilled out and then brazed or um, kind of welded onto this airline pipe. And then on the other end we've got the quick release connection so um, yeah it's something we've um, used over the years to do this and uh, that's what we're going to do but I just thought I'd give you a little quick look at that so you can see just how we're doing that and I thought it might be of interest what we were using to do it. We're now going to turn the engine over from the crankshaft you can just about see that we're uh, down on the crankshaft um, you'd never turn it from here because you could um, damage the belt basically so always do it from the um, crankshaft it'll never work um, properly or to do damage and what we're doing we're on number cylinder two and so to make sure the valves are shut we need these lobes both here and here to be right up so we know that they are definitely off the valves and those valves will um, definitely be closed so we can do the pressure test as you can see it's just turning steadily as we turn the engine over That's the exhaust, that's the inlet camshaft. Right, so as you've seen, the cams have been slowly turning as we've been turning the engine over. Uh, here on the exhaust side, the cams are um, definitely closed. And um, on the inlet side, they are now coming round and they're closing as well. So we just need to go a little bit further to make sure they're definitely closed, which we're now uh, at that point. They're both on the edge of the base of the cam now. Right, so now that we've checked that the valves are um, closed on both sides, we've just removed our little air attachment from the spark plug and we just had a look down and checked with the screwdriver that the piston is also right up at the top. So uh, now we've done that, we can remove that and put the um, air adapted attachment back into um, cylinder two. So we're putting the uh, airline adapter back into spark plug, we're just winding it in hand tight. Now that's in, before we do this test, I've got to go 
into the car and uh, do this. Right, so uh, once in the car, one of the things you need to do is to uh, put the car into third gear and uh, make sure the hand brake's on um, really well. Because uh, obviously when you push pressure into the cylinder, it will try and turn the uh, engine over. So that just makes sure the car can't move because um, your hand brake is on and the engine can't turn over because it's in um, third gear. Right, so now we've got the engine locked, the car being in gear and the uh, handbrake on so the uh, pressure can't actually move the car. It's now time to do the test and what we're going to be looking for um, is any air coming out of the uh, inlet manifold or the um, cylinder block there and uh, any air coming through the exhaust. And the reason we picked cylinder 2 is because that's where the misfire started, although we think we've cured that because the coil wasn't quite right. Um, the problems come about at the same time so it's worth checking that cylinder first although we are still going to check all of them so we'll also be looking for um, any air coming out um, from the dipstick the oil there as uh, well that's what else we'll be looking for So it's connected and the air is going in. Remember, a low pressure only around about two bar. And we're now just going to look around and check to see if we can see anything coming out. Right, so we're going to now check the um, inlet manifold and uh, check we can't fill any air. You can hear a little bit because obviously the airline leaks uh, a little bit. But what we're looking for is air coming out in places that it shouldn't do. Nothing coming out. Yeah. So we can't feel any air coming out of the um, block either and we can't hear any water bubbling though there's not full water in the system. The last thing is to um, fill the exhaust and there is no draft there at all so uh, it's definitely not coming through the exhaust either. We're going to do that now on uh, each cylinder and then come back to you. Right, so as I said at the back of the car, we're now on the next cylinder, we've gone to cylinder one now, although you wouldn't normally start with cylinder two, we wanted to do that, we're now going to go through the firing order, of course we've made sure that we've turned the engine over so the valves are in the right position as we showed you, and it's just going to be that procedure on each cylinder and then again going round and checking to see if we can find air leaking from them places that uh, I said, so we get back to you at the end of that process. Right, so we've gone through all the cylinders now and done the um, check on each one. We've actually come back to number two um, because although we said that slight hissing of air could be the airline, when we've done all the others there is no hissing of air and you actually hear the pressure build up and the engine almost slightly jump as the pressure builds up. But on cylinder two you don't. There's a slight air leak and the compressor's cutting in and out. As you can hear, it's cutting in and out. So although we can't actually feel any air coming out from the cylinder block, the inlet or the outlet, you can clearly see that the air is, is leaking. So um, we do think that it is probably likely to be the uh, head gasket. Ah, and as you can see the screwdriver just rising there as we get the um, cylinder right to the um, top dead centre. So that is another way of checking it as we showed you on the first one. We're just going to check cylinder number one again now um, just to confirm because we think it might be the case that um, those two are the two that are perhaps leaking between each other and affecting our water systems. So that's just a um, little double check to really confirm that... Um, our test is um, what we're suspecting. Right, so that's helped confirm for us that uh, the likelihood it is the head gasket and worth us taking the head off and going on to change that gasket. Uh, so we've now got to prepare the engine for doing that. Some of it's already done because of the other tests we did. So the next stage for us is to make sure everything's lined up and we do like to do that. So we've got to get the um, engine lined up with the timing mark so again we're going to be turning it from uh, down at the bottom of the engine turning the engine over until those marks line up 
and as you can see the two um, cam wheels are steadily turned as we turn the engine over to get the marks lined up. Right, so now we've got the marks aligned on the camshaft sprockets and I hope you can see that the two little white dots there on the teeth are aligning and also on these sprockets you'll have, although you can't see it, you'll have um, exhaust and in written there and then exhaust and in written there now when you're doing a head gasket change if you don't know about your cam belt it's normally a good time to do the cam belt as well but this cam belt has been changed really recently um times um probably around about four thousand miles ago so we aren't going to change the cam belt because there's not a need to do it but normally this would be a good time to do it we've got those timing marks aligned because to get the head off this cam belt and those wheels have to come off and you also need all the valves in a safe position so that you can't end up damaging anything when you remove the head or put it on you mustn't really remove you mustn't turn the engine over anymore now it's now in them positions you uh, leave it alone and it should be safe so one of the other useful things to make sure that um, the time of the engine stays um, in time is this little camshaft locking tool uh, you can see it there and uh, it basically looks like this and uh, it just simply slides in like that once you've got it aligned and that makes sure that uh, nothing can move we've also made sure the timing marks line up down on the uh, pulley at the bottom which is a job to show you but they are lined up as well as being lined up at the uh, top and as we say this tool will just make sure that nothing does go out of alignment so the next thing to do is to remove the exhaust and of course we have to remove this shield that's uh, i think about three bolts holding that on um, and uh, also you've got the alternator and uh, its bracket to remove so once we've removed all that um, we'll be a lot nearer to removing the head right so we've removed the two little bolts down in there that holds this cover on and we've also removed the two bolts that hold the sprockets on but what we've done as a double sort of check so that the cam belt doesn't move is we've tied the cam belt to um, each sprocket and marked a little bit of um, white paint on each one to make sure the two still align all we have to do is um, get them back on which might be a bit of a difficult job we'll have to see when we come to do that but if it works then it will certainly save us a lot of time what we've also done is remove the bolts holding the exhaust manifold on and we've removed the bracket holding the alternator on and pulled that away and now it's a case of removing the um the bolts that hold the head on uh they are sitting along here and there is a procedure to removing them which um, we will follow and it normally covers that in the uh, manual as well Right, so we've slowly loosened all the um, bolts that go right through into the bottom of the engine um, in the Pacific order. Once we've done that, we're now then just winding them out and getting them out, like you can see at the moment. Uh, they were quite tight and they did almost sort of undo, come to a lock and then we had to work them and get them out so they were tighter than what we're used to expecting but they uh, are coming out so uh, hopefully everything's okay and you'll see that um, these are a lot longer than bolts on them most engines when you do a head gasket and uh, that is the bolt out we're just going to now go through and get the rest of those uh, head bolts out so we've now more or less removed all the head bolts. The only thing that you will find, and it does make it very awkward, is on the um, camshaft, if, on some of the bolts you see there's a little metal bit here and uh, then there's a bit there for that sensor and they actually stop you from getting the bolts out, which means you have to slightly move this camshaft to get the bolts out, which 
kind of makes it awkward because you've set your own timing marks, but that's the only way you can, can do it. And once you've got the head off, then we will reposition these cams in the perfect position, but we'll cover that a little bit later on. But that's one of the more difficult bits that um, you come across when having to remove all the bolts. So that's all the bolts removed, so now all it needs is to kind of crack the head away um, both sides. And actually that's moving nice and easily, they don't always uh, do that, but that one has come away nice and easily. So now I'm going to put the camera down and we'll lift the head away. Right, so that's all the uh, head bolts there together. Now, we always change the head bolts. And I think it's something worth doing buying a head gasket kit where those bolts come in because you really don't want to use them again because they uh, do scratch. There's the head just down there. We've just put it on our bit of carpet so it's safe. And um, here is the uh, old gasket. One of the things we did have to quickly remove is the... Um, there are two thermostats on the... Um, engine or little uh, temperature sensors. temperature sensors and um, we did have to remove that one underneath and that's one of those ones where you pull this little bit of metal out it drops out and then we push the metal back in to uh, make sure we don't lose it so uh, yeah there's the old head gasket and it is a double layered one which is like we'll put back on so that's the top layer and um, here's the uh, second layer there Right, so there is the uh, gasket. I just thought we'd take it away from the engine and get some better light. And if I remove the metal shim that comes in the kit, and just put that down there. And we've had a little look at this uh, gasket. And of course, we were suspicious of the number two uh, cylinder. And what we've noticed is that this is peeling away, this little seal. Whereas on all the others, it's uh, nice and uh, strong. On this number two, it's just sitting lifted away. So we think that probably is where the gasket has failed. It's certainly something that's definitely not right, which we've had two other head gaskets that have gone in the past. And when you look at the gasket, you cannot really see anything wrong with it, although it has gone. So in some ways, that is quite nice to see. It looks like that's likely the place that it did, uh, did fail. So that is the head removed. Uh, there's a lot of cleaning ahead of us. We want to be cleaning up this surface as well as cleaning up the uh, head and uh, hopefully we'll show you some of that as well. Uh, while we sort of stand here in this cleaning process you may kind of wonder why we did all those different tests and tried everything else before we jumped at a head gasket um, because I know uh, a lot of people seem to think that um, Rover K-series engines are prone to uh, head gaskets, whereas in our experience, um, the head gaskets don't go any more than any other car, really. The only thing they probably are more prone to go is if you don't keep an eye on the engine or look after it and keep a check on your water levels or water leaks. And uh, in all the sort of K-series engines we've had, and that's in two metros, we've got four 45s and two 75s. We've only ever changed two head gaskets, but definitely needed doing. And that's over probably a 15, 16 year period but what we have found is there's been at least three occasions where um, there have been symptoms of a head gasket but it has turned out not to be and actually two of the cars were diagnosed as having head gasket problems when we took them on and it wasn't that at all um, so if I'll let you know what those three things were and that's why we are much more cautious and want to be definitely sure before we go on to change a head gasket um, one of the things that that had caused what looked like a head gasket problem and I think I did mention this once before is this bypass here between the uh, heater hoses um, someone had fitted a brand new hose but this bypass was blocked with all rubber and plastic and that actually caused exactly the same sort of symptoms air locks overheating so you could have changed the head gasket and it wouldn't have been needed um, the other um, 45 we took on was our other silver one and uh, that was losing a lot of water it hadn't been overheated but it was losing water and getting small air locks and that turned out to be the gasket on the inlet manifold had, uh, had gone and uh, the final time we've had 
what's suspect as a head gasket and wasn't was the water pump leaking which again the water drained down caused an airlock and gave all those problems um we got on to them pretty soon and got it sorted out before the head gaskets were damaged but as well as those problems being kind of easily misdiagnosed as a head gasket if they'd have been left alone the engine overheating and the airlocks probably would have caused a head gasket and that's what our experience is um even if the head gaskets do go more often it is often perhaps uh, a problem somewhere else that's that's caused it so i just thought i'd cover that in this um little piece so yeah just as i finished filming just thinking about it we also had what seemed like a head gasket problem with a faulty thermostat once as well but we knew that was the problem because we just changed it and actually this is the first time we've needed to do an head gasket on one of the twin cam engines the other two head gaskets we did were both on the um, metro which is the uh, single cam um, so the next thing to do is have a little look at the uh, head so yeah what we have done is put some tissue in uh, each of the cylinders so no dirt or moisture gets in um, and then we're putting something over the top as well temporary we've just got some tissue what we do longer term is leave a uh, piece of cloth over there and that just protects the uh, engine while we work on cleaning up the head of the engine which hopefully i can show you um, a little bit later. So while we're out here we're going to clean off the top of this head but the first thing we're going to do is remove the water that's still left in the uh, head. You can just see it reflecting there so we're using one of those sort of pipettes you'd use for cooking as they're quite useful for doing this sort of thing. So uh, yeah we're going to get that water out and then start cleaning the uh, head. Right so what we're doing now is just giving it a light scraping with this nice um, scraper obviously ensuring not to go too hard or to gouge the uh, head just to get those really sort of raised black marks that have been left behind from the gasket then we'll probably go over it with uh, a bit of scotch bright right so after doing that scraping we got it the best we could so now we're going over a little bit of scotch bright and uh, using a little bit of um, brake clean as well just to remove all those final marks so it's back to uh, a nice clean surface as you can see it's looking uh, a lot better and a lot cleaner and uh, it'll be ready for the gasket to go on then what we'll be doing is going inside and then cleaning off the uh, head Right, so that's the surface of the engine cleaned up. What you may notice is we've removed those um, cam belt um, cogs there, the um, ones that go on the head. As we've looked online, and a uh, cam belt isn't too expensive, and while we've gone this far, we might as well change the cam belt. That way we can retime it up, put a new tensioner on, and... Um, Although the cam belt's not done lots of mileage in age, it could be three and a half, four years old. Um, and I think they say sometimes you shouldn't have a cam belt any older than sort of seven, um, at the longest ten years old. Normally change it seven years, so we think with all this work we might as well change it as well. So uh, we'll take you through that process when we come to, uh, to change it. But uh, now it'll be cleaning up the head. Right, so now we're inside, we're going to be cleaning up the uh, head. But I just thought I'd give you a little look at this uh, head, because as you can see here on the cylinder number two, um, the valves look clearly a different colour to the other um, three cylinders. They're looking more normal. This is looking very rusty, which is telling us that probably water was getting in. And you can also see here, it's very sort of rusty and dirty in comparison to the um, joins or gaps in between each cylinder. I just want to let you look at the gasket again, although we looked at that. Uh, we found not only the laminate in this side, but on this side, you can see it's very rusty and it's all coming up here whereas if we go over to this side look in with my fingers rubbing it that is still quite very much intact whereas here it's very rusty and breaking up here delaminating so the good thing is there's definitely good signs the uh, head gasket um has gone and that has been our problem as i was saying before when i was talking about it the 
other two head gaskets we did on one of them there was oil uh, in the water so it had clearly gone but when you actually took the uh, gasket off and looked at the head there was very little signs that the head gasket had gone although it had so it is nice on this one we can see uh, a clear difference so we're going to clean that up exactly how we clean the uh, top of the engine up and then I'll let you have a look when we've um, done that and perhaps a few little shots of the process as well. So as well as um, cleaning up the surface where the gaskets go, and we're also cleaning up all around the uh, camshafts on the top of the head. We used some brake cleaner and just left it for a few hours to really soak in. And now with a brush, we're using some white spirit and just getting off all that sort of old, dirty and uh, grounding oil, just so it's nice and uh, clean for when it goes back. Right, so now this is looking a little bit cleaner in here after us um, brushing uh, all that dirt out with a cleaner. Uh, what we're now going to be doing is cleaning up the seat down in there where the spark plug sits. A job for um, you to see that. But we've made up a special little tool just to do that and we're going along and uh, cleaning them out. Right, so while we're doing this, I thought it would be a good opportunity just to uh, have a look at the camshafts actually moving. This isn't something you'd do when the belt was connected, but because we've got the head off and we're cleaning it, we've had to turn it and we'll have to set all the timing back up when we put it back on. And if I come in a little bit closer, you'll be able to see the... Um, camshaft just turning there and uh, also pushing down on the um, valves there. Right, so we've turned the head over so you're now looking down onto the valves um, and of course normally they would be almost upside down when they're sitting on the engine we've got it up facing this way so you can uh, you can see it and um, I thought we'd just have a look at this as well because it's a good opportunity to see it but it also shows you how the um, valves stick well out into the space where the piston is and obviously the piston's coming almost close up to this uh, head and if you look at this um, ruler here and I turn it round you can see just how far when the valves are fully open they come in or lift past that point of the uh, head into the space where the piston would be and that's why it's so important and we sort of make a big thing about getting the timing right because if you get it wrong uh, when you start the engine up the piston would come up as this valve comes down and uh, would damage the piston that's also what happens when the belt snaps which is why we always like to keep our belts changed and uh, up to date and it's so you don't often get to see because it, it might be something you already know or have seen but i thought why would doing this video I would just show you just how the um, valves come right out into uh, that space which on an engine that um, sort of fail safe they wouldn't come out into the space where the piston uh, goes so hopefully yeah that's give you a, a good sort of visual reference just how far those valves open um, past the head and into the space where the piston is and if we just turn it round that'll give you a view of those valves opening and uh, shutting a little bit And then if you now turn the other side, you can see those valves opening as, uh, as well. And it's a nice thing to see because obviously when the engine is, is running, they are moving so fast, you probably wouldn't even see them opening. So uh, being able to turn it over manually like that gives uh, us a nice visual reference of the valves opening and shutting on the uh, cylinder head while we're cleaning it out. Right, so you may notice that this uh, head is looking uh, a lot better and uh, the colouring of it is looking even right across. We've scraped off with that special scraper uh, any of the bits left behind from the gasket. We've then gone over it, as you see, with some Scotch-Brite. What we've also got is um, what well, looks like a wire brush, but it's actually a special fibre brush and we just go over it very, very gently just to give it a final uh, cleaning. <laughs> Thank you. 
we'll carry on doing that and uh, see you at the next stage. So as we've been shown, we've been cleaning the um, top of the engine, also the head, getting all that cleaned up. We've also now cleaned up all the bolts with uh, a wire brush, so they're all nice and clean and ready to go back. We've been doing that really over the last couple of days, and I've just been showing you little updates. At the moment, we're moving these rubber seals. That one's already been removed, and we're about to uh, hook that one out. And of course, you get new seals in the gasket kit that we've bought, which I'm going to show you in just a minute. But that's um, an update on how we've been getting on with the cleaning so I thought I'd show you now before we open it the gasket set that we've bought the gasket kit that we've bought the head gasket kit uh, it's one we've bought online there's lots of different kits uh, lots of different prices and I think it's just you got to choose whichever one you feel happiest with um, we've bought one of the metal head gaskets the like double layered ones we've used them before and they uh, seem to work and again it's one of those things some people say they are better and other people say the single ones are better and in different contexts it's probably both work better and you're just unlucky if your head gasket goes again whatever you're using but this kit comes with everything we need all the rubber seals uh, the inlet manifold seals say so the two gaskets the rocker head gasket it's uh, all there so the other important thing that we always make sure is in the kit are the head bolts uh, they're still sealed in this box at the moment but it is important because the bolts scratch so if you try and use them again they either won't scratch or they scratch too much and then the um, head can come away because the bolts can scratch more or they're more likely to cause a head gasket to fail so we always make sure that the um, head bolts come in with our kit so yeah i thought i'd just show you the kit before we've unwrapped it to show you how we get a head gasket kit then perhaps we'll go through it in a bit more detail And that's the um, sill out. I just thought I'd show you that. Um, it seems sort of um, a bit of a brutal job to do, but it's um, one of the only ways to get it out. But what you do have to be careful is that you don't damage any of the bearing surface. So although you're kind of being brutal to get that sill out, you're also being careful on the um, other side of things to make sure that no damage is done. And uh, it's just a case of really taking your time and uh, being sure what you're doing. But I just thought I'd show you that before we put them in. So now we've got the camshaft oil seals out and that's on the reverse side of the engine as well. So there's actually four to this side, two on the um, underside uh, that the, end, the head standing on at the moment, the bench there. Um, the seals come with the kit, as I said, it does come with everything. We've got three seals there and the seal we're about to do is soaked in oil as we always like to have them um, with some oil on before we put them in just to... Um, try and save them from being damaged or to help from damage occurring. Right, so what we do to get the seals in and to make things easier for us is we find uh, an old socket like this uh, that's roughly the right sort of size for the um, rubber seal so you can then um, bang that seal in which we'll be showing you uh, in just a minute. And what we also do is uh, check that um, it fits in there without doing any damage to the outer or the uh, inner part of that uh, area. Making sure that that area is as clean as uh, possible, we've wiped it around with a nice clean cloth. We're now just putting a little bit of oil around there as well as having the seal soaked in the oil. Right, so we're getting the seal on um, as straight as possible before we um, use that socket to tap it in and the seals going in with the like the grooved bit um, to the down and we can see the flat part of the seal sticking up and it was a case of just doing that gently tapping it in so it slowly goes in and uh, what we'll then be doing is doing that on the other um, three seals and then we'll uh, carry on at the next stage. So the last thing to clean is just the um, face of the manifold and then we're all cleaned up. Right, 
Right, so we're now just putting back these studs. We took them all out. We don't always have to. We normally always would anyway, but they were quite bad on this one. And where I brushed them, cleaned them up, as I showed you earlier, all the bolts in our magnetic trays, we're putting them back now. A little bit of copper slip on them and the two lock nuts on the top to allow us to wind them uh, in. And um, we've just got to do that right across the um, head. Right, so we're nearly at the point of actually starting to fit the uh, head gasket. And uh, now we've opened this uh, kit, it does seem quite nice, as uh, a lot of the stuff is its own separate little bag. So uh, it is packaged quite nice, because in the past we've um, had head gasket sets where it literally is a bit of card and everything's just vacuum formed in a plastic over that piece of card. So it doesn't seem a bad kit. Uh, only time will tell as to um, how good the gasket is, but it certainly doesn't seem too bad. And the supplier we bought it from online appears to specialise in selling head gaskets or aftermarket head gaskets for lots of different makes of uh, cars, which are hopefully is always um, a better sign. Um, we're going to be working from the uh, Haynes manual as you can see there and also the kit come with some information uh, printed over to that side so uh, that's what we'll be working for for our talk settings and also the um, procedure for tightening the head uh, as you go through the bolts that uh, all that information that's where we're getting it from. So before we put the uh, head back on, one thing that's worth doing is just checking there's no major distortion. And uh, what we do is put a steel ruler across and uh, just check that there's no obvious uh, gaps. And what we've done there to show you and what you can do, we've put a torch uh, there. And uh, as you can see, there's no light coming through. But if you tip the... Um, the, uh, or just lift it like that, you can see some light comes through and then as we bring it back up and uh, level it shuts out any light so that's telling us there's no major uh, distortion in the head. You can also use um, a little feeler gauge but actually um, you're not really going to get anything through. If you can't see any daylight, you're not going to get a feeler gauge through that gap anyway. And we go across both sides of the head. As I say, um, some people seem to panic about getting the head skimmed every time. We've done head gaskets and not found it to be a problem. And we tend to find that um, if you can't see any major distortion, anything that you can't see is so minor, the head gasket uh, will take up. And uh, that, in some ways, is what it's designed to do. So the other thing you can check, and we always um, try and check if we're doing a head gasket on these engines, is that none of the uh, liners, that's the piston liners that I'm pointing there, have sunken. Um, you want to check that we've put a ruler across and theoretically they should be sitting very slightly above. But we're talking very um, minute amount so uh, as long as they don't look obviously sunken or very obviously raised then you should be all right and that's what we're really checking for anything that's really obviously wrong um we don't sort of get um wrapped up in you know teeny bits of um a fail it's more just checking that nothing looks obviously wrong which on this engine they're looking more or less level if you really technically um, measured it they're probably sitting very slightly above but um, it's really a job to see in something we can't show uh, on this camera but it's just checking there's nothing obviously wrong so while we're doing this head gasket I just thought I'd say don't forget to subscribe to the channel of course you can like this video as well and don't forget to check out Instagram and uh, Twitter pages while we're at the stage of fitting the head gasket and as I said we're using one of the metal multi-layered gaskets um, it consists of this main part of the gasket We've still got it wrapped because we won't unwrap that to the last um, bit but you can see there it's almost like um, a black layer a metal layer and then another black layer and you can see how these areas are slightly raised over some of the other areas which all get um, crushed down when you tighten the head and make the seal and this gasket also comes with this um, metal almost shim that uh, comes with the kit so it's a multi-layered gasket and that um, shim uh, we're going to be putting on but i just thought i'd give you uh, a nice little look at this um, gasket before we uh, fitted it
Right, so I'll give you one last little look at the um, engine block with the pistons in their safe position. And um, what you do get with the kit is these little metal dials. Um, we removed them with a pair of mole grips and we've fitted the new metal dials into the um, engine uh, that's worth doing as well as uh, the metal dials are often um, stronger i think than what's there originally but of course they could have already been changed on your engine but uh, that's the um, stage we've just completed and i think we are ready to put the uh, head gasket onto the bottom of the engine and join it with the uh, head Right, so we've got the head gasket out of its plastic wrapping. And as I said, it's all nicely wrapped up and well put together, this gasket. So uh, hopefully it'll be a good and long-lasting one. And uh, there you can see it's even marked up um, where to uh, put the gasket. And uh, that'll let you know which way round the gasket needs to go as, uh, as well. And uh, also, just to let you know, that when we talked about the... Um, Dales in that last section uh, they are also the oil feed so when you're putting them in you do need to make sure they go in right and are not blocked because that's the way the oil is going to get up to the uh, head and uh, coming back to the gasket this gives you an even better look hopefully ah you can see it there as it focuses the multi-layer of the gasket uh, made up of this um, black metal then a silvery metal and then another layer of black metal so uh, now we're going to put that on And that should slip on nice and easily and all the holes for your water and your oil dowels uh, they should all line up so with this gasket kit as i showed you it comes with a shim so we'll put that on next and that goes on top of the gasket and we know that because the instructions that come with this tells you to put the main gasket onto the engine first and then put the shim on top of it And uh, that's the shim on, so that's all sitting nicely, uh, nothing's being blocked up. And um, what we've done, the shim doesn't appear to be marked what way round, but the way the holes line up, there is only one way round it could really go with this one here being quite unique uh, for a start. But there's a few other little bits as, as well, so that's both of those uh, on and ready for the head to go back on. Right, so the head's ready to go back on as well. But what we are going to do is put the exhaust gasket on because it's quite difficult to get on once the head is in place with the exhaust still sitting there. So we're just going to put that on to make it easier and uh, hopefully that, that will work. Right, so these are the bolts that um, bolt the head down. They come with the kit. And as I was saying before, it's well worth getting a kit with these bolts because... Um, we don't think you really want to be using the same bolts. We're quite surprised even the manual says if you measure them and check there's no stretching in them, you can use them again. But looking online at gasket sets, this gasket set actually was the same price as some sets that come without the bolts. So really, it's worth getting those new bolts and you haven't got to worry whether they're scratched or damaged. You're just putting a new set of bolts in with your new gasket. And as you'll see, they're quite long, which is quite different to the bolts on a lot of... Um, head gaskets when you do them right so what we're doing is just lubricating the bolts with just a small amount of um, oil uh, it does recommend you doing that but what you don't want to do is put too much oil on um, so it doesn't affect the bolt when you're talking it down because you could almost the oil could cause like a hydraulic in effect so uh, it needs some oil but not too much on them but again you want to be very careful how you put them in don't drop them and uh, just gently feel them through right so we're now going to put the bolts down through the head and into the engine and just tighten them hand tight and uh, a little bit um, more just so that they're in and uh, holding then we'll be following the tightening sequence so we're now going to just put the rest of the bolts in and then we'll go through the tightening sequence
Right, so we're now ready for the tightening stage of those um, head bolts. Uh, there's three stages to that, and the first stage is to torque them up to 20 newton meters, and there's a procedure for um, torquing them up, and we're following the Haynes manual, I'll just show you that there, of that tightening sequence, but more or less it translates that you're tightening them up from the center outwards. And there you can hear the um, torque has reached the right torque of 20 newton meters as the torque wrencher clicks. We're now going to go through that sequence and do that to all the uh, head bolts. Right, so we're now ready for stage two of the head tightening process. Uh, what we've done is marked the head bolts you see all there with a little red dot and what you have to do is turn them 180 degrees for stage two so that's what we're going to do next as you can see we've also put some tissue paper in the spark plug holes to stop anything falling in there or us even dropping something in there because that would be a real problem if uh, something went down there So as you can see, we've now turned that 180 degrees, which is more or less half a turn. And that red dot is now in its new position, whereas all the other red dots are still in their original position. We're now going to go around and do that to each bolt, uh, again following that um, sequence that's uh, in our uh, manual, which I'm just showing you there. Right, so that's all the bolts tightened to the second stage. As you can see, all the red dots are now um, to the uh, bottom. We're now going to start stage three, which is the final stage, and that's to tighten them another 180 degrees. Again, following that uh, sequence we've been following, which should effectively bring those red dots all the way back up to the top again. So that's uh, two of them done. As you can see the red dots now back up at the top. We're going to continue to do the rest to complete that um, final and third stage of the tightening process. So that is now all the bolts torqued down to the um, specified settings in that three stage process. Uh, what we will have to do though is put the cams back into the safe timing position because what we have done is move these cams so you can get to all of the bolts whereas in the safe position some of the bolts you can't get to like where this lug here and here is but that will be the next stage so what we've been doing now is just putting the exhaust manifold back onto the uh, engine. What we found made it easier was to remove those two end studs, so that allowed us to slide the manifold, the exhaust manifold back on, and then we're putting those two studs back in now. Right, so now it's time to put the camshaft sprockets back on. We move, remove them um, to make it easier for us to do. Um, but one thing you do need to be aware of is technically you could put them on the wrong way round. And then we mark these so we know that this um, cam... Um, sprocket was actually the in one but if you hadn't marked it um, you do need to check that it is in the right positions and the way you do that is that if you look down here you've got this drive almost coming out from the um, from the cams they follow through and, this drive. and there's this little um, 
pimple that sticks out, little piece of metal that sticks out. And when you put the cam sprocket on, if it's on the inlet camshaft, then you need that little nodule to go through the marking that says in otherwise your timing marks won't line out because technically you could put the nodule in the outside which means your timing marks here would then out. would then be the wrong way around so that's what we're going to do now is put our in one onto that right so now we've just positioned that on without putting the bolt in and hopefully you can see that that little metal tag out of the um, drive shaft to the um, cam shaft is um, in that little alcove with in on it and uh, not the out one and then when we come over to this side we will put it on but line that little dial um, up with the um, out slot in the other cam wheel. Right, so we've now got the other cam sprocket in, uh, but this time hopefully you can see that that little um, dial, as the camera focuses, is um, now in the slot that is marked um, exhaust or the outlet. And uh, basically what that means is when you then come back to get in the um, cam sprockets timed, the right timing marks will line up as they say in the book, and not the wrong way around. So that's the important bit with uh, doing that. So we've just got to put that um, bolt back in and then we'll be re-timing the uh, camshafts into their safe position. Right, so as I said before, what we did was we technically put the um, cams out of the safe position so that we could get to all of the head bolts. Uh, what we've now got to do is put them back into the safe position because the engine has remained in that safe position. We now need to put the cams back into the safe position so that when we put the belt on, the engine is all timed up. So we're now going to do that. Right, there's the timing mark. We want it round to here. Right, so if I zoom in a little bit, you can see our little timing mark there in um, white. And what we've got to do is bring that all the way round to the um, right position. Now you can see the two little white lines line up to the um, centre of the two cogs and uh, that is the only time really you can turn um, those is when the belt is removed and the only reason we are turning them is to put them back into the uh, safe position ready for the belt to be fitted. So I just thought I'd show you now that uh, now the cams are back into, all the cam shafts are back into their safe positions. Um, if you look closely, you'll be able to see that this lug is overlapping the bolt. Now, it doesn't look much, but it is enough so that you can't get that bolt out and you can't tighten it up properly either. And that happens in a couple of places. And that was why we um, altered them from the safe position um, to a different position to do that. And the only reason we could do that and not damage the valves is because the bottom of the engine has remained in the safe position. So the pistons are right down low. So if any of those valves were sticking out, out, they wouldn't hit the pistons or we wouldn't damage them as we're resetting this top part of the engine back into its uh, safe position. So that is those cam sprockets back into position. The only last things to do is to um, torque them up and also put the locking tool in there so that they can't move 
why we're doing any other work. What I'm going to do now is leave this section of the video at this point because we are going to put a new cam belt on this. So I'm going to do that as a separate video, the new cam belt, and also putting everything back together. But hopefully that will give you a rough idea of... Um, how we fit a, a head gasket as always it's not how to it's more just to give you a little visual reference on um, doing the job if you're thinking about doing it alongside using all the manuals and information that will come with your head gasket and as I say don't forget to look out for uh, part two where we'll be doing the cam belt and putting everything back together